Telling Good Stories, or Four Keys to Writing Good Stories. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead. The key to writing or telling good stories is just to write or tell stories, and to write a ton of things. Most people would say something like, this is the one secret you need to be a good writer. And then they make you sit there through 30 minutes of word salad just to say that one sentence that you kind of already knew. Now, this is the biggest secret. You need to write a lot. And to not necessarily challenge yourself every time, but just to write and try to get a little better each time. Now, the second point is you need to read other writers or to listen to stories. Or if you watch movies, pay attention to what they are doing. If, for example, you love watching Netflix series, that's going to mess you up a little bit because most of those stories are decompressed. They're very long form. But if you're watching movies, and the movie is 90 minutes long, you can kind of watch it and dissect as you're watching what they're doing. When are they telling you information? When are they giving you information? How is the story coming about? Now, for example, in my case, if you love comic books, and you're looking to be a comic book writer, which I write novels and I write comic books, you can't just read a bunch of comics. That's not enough. You need to pay attention to the stories and figure out what works. Even though it might not directly transfer over to your style or to your prose type, the basics are still the same. You need a beginning, a middle, and an end. And now I know that is not revolutionary or, you know, that's not breaking any new ground anywhere. But I have to tell you, You'd be shocked at how many people write stories, even professionals, even comic pros, even novelists, and they do not have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Even if you're going to tell the story out of order, you still have to know what your beginning, your middle, and your end is. Even if you have some huge epic in mind, you're going to need to cut it up into chapters if you're putting it in, in a book. In comics, each issue needs to be its own contained story that tells a larger story. Novels, it, it honestly, is it's fairly easy because if, you, if you're aiming for a certain word count, you can have multiple story arcs which introduce people and then have people fall away as you move through the story. But each time you're going to need a beginning to introduce them, a middle, tell about them, and an end. Going back to the comic idea, you, most comics, monthly comics especially, are 20 pages of story. And those 20 pages of story, to be good, need to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Even if the end is left open enough to leave room for the next issue, there still needs to be some sort of wrapping up of that issue. This is a major issue with current era comics versus comics that were made, say, before 2005. They, they call it decompressed storytelling. The past decade and a half, comics have been written for trade paperbacks. And so many comics simply just literally stop mid-story at page 20. 20 pages in, and there's, oh, a cliffhanger, and they stop. But literally, they're just stopping in the middle of the story. The others will have little short stories in each issue. But four of the nine issues that are going to make it into the trade, just nothing happens. They're just padding. They're filler. They're, they're, they're either not going to make it into the trade, or they're just there to, to pad out the numbers so you get hundred and 60 pages or 210 pages or whatever the number they're looking for is. One of my favorite storytellers of all time is Steve Ditko. And I love him because he didn't necessarily worry about having three acts, but he would tell, he would give you something at the beginning and then he would just raise tension for the rest of the story and then a climax. But that's still in a way three parts because he would give you that introduction and then he would give you a bunch of stuff that happened to raise tension and then he'd have an ending. In fact, probably my three favorite storytellers in comics are Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, and George Perez. But that's along with the likes of those like uh, Chris Claremont and Anne Nascenti, who Anne Nascenti's Daredevil run is epic. And is a, is a if you read a bunch of them, you will have a masterclass in storytelling. And before recently, usually, every issue had those three parts. The beginning, the middle, the end. Whether Stan Lee or Jack Kirby were writing, or heck, Mary Wolfman, or Scott Lubdell, or Grant Morrison, Ed Brubaker, Alan Davis, Chuck Austin. Obviously, by those names I just gave, I'm a huge X-Men fan as I was growing up. 
And those are most of the stories I read growing up. But they all knew that one thing of there had to be multiple 20 page complete stories that they put together to make a story arc. Now that leads me to the third point, which is get good at storytelling by telling short stories first. Sure, if given enough time and enough words, you can create some epic story, but is it any good? A good writer can tell the same story in a hundred words that they can tell in a thousand words. But a great writer can tell the same story in 25 words, 80 words, 150 words, 500 words, a thousand words, 5,000 and so on, up to 150,000 if that's what you're going for. But a huge mistake people make is going right for that 600 page epic novel without first figuring out how to capture someone's attention for 10 pages. And luckily, short stories are short stories, and so they are quick to write. So you can write a bunch of them. So try to write a bunch of disconnected 500 word stories. Matter of fact, write one every day for the next two weeks. See how much easier and probably better your writing will be at the end of two weeks. And you don't have to write it down like on a typewriter or in a computer word processor. If you want to tell good stories, if your cell phone has a record function, hit record and record yourself telling a story. My fourth point is going to be to always have the beginning in mind. And if possible, write the last page first. This is probably one of the few things that I'll say that a lot of people don't bring out when they're talking about these sorts of things. And I'm, I'm, I insist that a great way to write is to actually write the final page. Don't just have an idea. Write it. Because it gives you a destination that can seriously improve your writing. Think of it this way. Try to imagine yourself getting ready to run a race, but you don't know where the finish line is. You have an idea. I mean, you, you kind of think it's close to this one area, but you're not going to know until you're 20 feet away. That would be difficult. So if you're writing a 20-page comic, or if you're writing a 10-page short story in prose form, write the last page first. And you can change it later. It doesn't have to be set in stone. But write it because it gives you a goal. Imagine that if your main character is sitting on a rock with a glowing sword, he has a briefcase that's that's also glowing. There's a dog sitting next to him that talks. A woman who controls the weather is is standing and you know revealing provocative clothing next to him, and a villain is falling to his death from his own doomsday satellite into an active volcano. You now know that at the very minimum, you have to introduce your protagonist, that talking dog, the woman who controls the weather, and the villain in the first, say, three or four pages, maybe five. Then after that, you're going to have to explain where that sword comes from. What about the briefcase? How do these people know each other? Was the Doomsday satellite built just then, or did it already exist? And if it already existed, what's the backstory behind it? And why is this villain using it? You have at least 9 to 11 pages to build that tension, to expand the plot and explain why these things happen, why they exist, and where it's going. Now, you might say that you're not writing an action story. It doesn't really matter if, it's, if you're not writing something that's action. You need to have a plan of where you're headed. And the other thing somebody would say is that, isn't this going to become formulaic? Isn't, isn't it going to be just the same story over here? And the thing I'll say is that this type of storytelling has worked since before there was written words. They used to sit around campfires at night telling stories. I guarantee you the person telling the story had the ending in mind. They knew where they were headed for that ending. They just told it a little different. That's the reason why we have a hundred different tellings of basically the same epic story. It's just slightly different based upon what region of the world it came from. And now that you have all of the elements, you can just plot out how to put them together easier. That's that's what makes it easier. You need If you don't have all the elements in place, you're making things up. It's not going to have as compelling of a story. Now that you have them, you're good. And you don't have to just explain out your characters like, this is Phil. He's in his 20s. He's a Latino living in Chicago. He attends an arts college. He works at a uh, theater or something. No, he has a brother. No, you write the scene that you can write a single scene or a single page with an action sequence that gives you all of the information that you need. 
if you've ever watched anime, you'll know that there's this whole running late for class with a piece of toast in your mouth trope. Now, that might be way overdone, but it is a genius way of introducing all of the elements of your story very quickly and action-packed way. Think about it. It starts with a room full of textbooks, game consoles, posters on the walls. Suddenly, a preschool-aged girl runs in and jumps on the boy's stomach. He screams in pain as he wakes up and rolls over, asks, What are you doing, little sister? She replies, Yuta, I wanted to say bye before I get on the bus. The boy says, But you don't leave until an hour after I do. He turns and looks at the clock. It's 8 a.m. He screams, Oh no, I'm late for my first day of college. And then a sequence where he runs around to get dressed. He can't get in the bathroom because his older sister's in there and she's saying mean things to him. Running down the stairs as his mother is putting toast on a plate and says, It's about time you woke up, sleepyhead. The boy says, Hi, Mom. Can't eat. I'm late for school. Bye, Mom. As he's leaving, heading out the door, she says, Remember, your father and I are going to a banquet tonight, so we won't be here when you get back. She looks down, and her toast is missing. She sighs. The boy is running down the street. He's dodging cars, he's jumping over trash cans, swinging around light posts, a piece of toast hanging out of his mouth. As he is still attempting to put his jacket on, but he has his book bag in one hand, he doesn't see a car coming as he goes in the intersection, he jumps to the side, getting knocked down, landing on top of a beautiful young woman. The toast is hanging out of his mouth, it's touching her lips as she stares at him. Completely shocked, he mutters to her, Oh, I'm sorry, Mika. I, uh, we, uh, uh, well, I I gotta go. I'm late for class. As he runs off, and she's brushing herself off in the background. You see right there, in that sequence, you know who he is, because you got his name. You know he's a first-year college student, so you have his age range. You know he has at least two sisters, one older, one younger. You know he has both parents living with him at home. They seem fairly normal and well-adjusted. You also briefly introduced the crush that he has, or, or will be his you know, target, because he wants to go out with his girl. You set up the second half of the story, because his parents aren't going to be home. So is he going to bring the girl back there, and some craziness is going to happen? Or is there going to be an interaction with the sisters without the parents there, as they're trying to make dinner? You introduced so much, and you set up your third act in just like one or two pages, in a sequence. Or in anime, it'd be less than two minutes. See, there are many ways of telling stories. Most of them are three acts. Some of them are four acts. And... Even as I pointed out with Ditko, he kind of did a two-act, but that's for a later time. But for now, to recap, how do you tell good stories? You tell a lot of stories. You tell a lot of different stories. You start with short stories. Get good at short stories. Make sure you have an ending before you start. Consider writing the ending before you write the rest of the story. And make sure your story has a distinguishable beginning middle, and end. And again, write a lot of them. This is the Christian Nomad. If you've got to this point, I thank you for listening to my Comics Nomad channel. If you would like, subscribe, share, do all the youtube things, that would be great. If not, if you hated it, hit a down like on this and tell me how much I suck in the comments. Thank you, and God bless.